束したんだソロ大変だクイナが家の階段で転んで死んだ Before I start today's video, I just want to say thank you to all of you who've subscribed, as we've now hit over 1,000 subscribers. This really helps to keep us motivated to produce more videos for you. Now let's get on to today's video. The great pirate hunter Zoro, the single most legendary green haired individual in the New World, with his unmatched swordsmanship, confident and cool attitude, and a strong set of principles, it's no wonder the man is a fan favorite, excluding Luffy. However, this strong set of principles can prove to be quite troublesome. One especially problematic and unusual principle Zoro adheres to is refusing to fight women. While this may be a good moral in the real world, the second world of One Piece is completely different. With females like Charlotte Lin Lin and Boa Hancock roaming the land, refusing to fight a woman could easily be the first and final mistake you ever make. However, even after witnessing the great power of characters such as these, Zoro always sheathes his sword in battle against women. Why does he do this? Well, Achuro Oda never outright tells us, so we're forced to infer based off details we know about Zoro's past. Here are my three guesses as to why Zoro treats fighting women like a mortal sin. One, the first possibility is Zoro's childhood rival, Kuina. As a child, Zoro trained at the dojo where he defeated nearly everyone he fought, including adults. Kuina, the dojo master's daughter, was the exception. He fought and lost to her in a total of 2,001 battles. Zoro and Kuina go on to have a heartfelt conversation about their dream to become the invincible swordsman. Promising to finally defeat Kuina one day, the two young rivals parted ways. The following day, Kuina tragically met her death, resulting in an intense feeling of anger and sadness in Zoro. While it may be initially seen as counterintuitive that Zoro would not fight females after having a female rivalry as a child, it's actually quite logical. After experiencing such a traumatic event as a child, Zoro could have convinced himself that Kuina was the only female worthy of his skills. Moreover, he may subconsciously worry that he will one day encounter a female stronger than Kuina, which makes their promise seem foolish and hollow. Refusing to recognize the abilities of any other female fighter, he vows to never fight a woman again. Two, another theory for Zoro's refusal to fight women is that he's not encountered one he considers at his level yet. Another principle of Zoro's is to only fight people seriously if he considers them a worthy opponent. Remember when Zoro left the fight with Yozo because he wasn't considered a challenge? This is an ideal example, displaying that Zoro doesn't just refuse battles with women exclusively. Therefore, it's possible that Zoro is so confident in his abilities that he's not considered any of the female antagonists worth fighting. Challenged by Don Quixote pirate, Monet, Zoro provides a similar excuse that he used in his fight with Yozo. However, Monet is far from weak, seeing as she underwent a procedure to convert her from a human to a harpy with the ability to fly. Additionally, she consumed a Logia-type devil fruit, gifting her the ability to turn into and manipulate snow. Regardless, Zoro denies her challenge, and Toshigi is forced to step in, dealing the finishing blow. Toshigi confronts him about not striking women, and he makes the excuse that Monet was not worthy of his abilities. Although this is the theory that Zoro would like you to believe, it's full of holes. If it were truly about the strength of the opponent, Zoro wouldn't have held back against Monet. Yes, it's certainly true that he would have defeated her in battle, but she still was a threat to his life if he did not defend himself. Had Toshiki not interfered, Zoro would most definitely have been killed. The sole fact that Zoro was willing to sacrifice his life and reputation as a swordsman proves the fact that Monet being a woman played a major role in his decision. Number 3. My third and final theory is that every time he fights a woman, it reminds him of Kuina. There are hints of this throughout the series, both large and small. The prime example is during his battle with Tashiki in Logtown. Zoro refuses to raise his weapon against her, and she takes this as an insult. She finds it very sexist and demeaning of him not to fight her simply because of her gender. However, Zoro deflects that she reminds him of someone he used to know, Kuina. It's possible that Zoro is flooded with painful memories of Kuina every time he fights a woman, as she's the only girl he actually ever fought. However, once again, as this is only a theory, there are contradictions. Toshigi really might have been similar in her strong, independent personality to Kuina, which is why in this case, he was reminded of her. However, enemies like Monet, who are 100% evil, possess no resemblance to the late Kuina. 
Moreover, even in the Tashigi confrontation, Zoro never specifically refutes that he won't fight her because she's a woman. In fact, he completely ignores that statement and gives an excuse. This is rather suspicious and implies that gender really is the key factor in Zoro's refusal to fight. In conclusion, although there's no definitive reason for Zoro being against fighting girls, Kuina is most likely involved. And the fact that Zoro was able to fight girls as a child proves that chivalry plays no part. Rather, a personal conflict that arose from Kuina's death pushed Zoro towards this way of thinking. Whether it be a refusal to acknowledge any female being stronger than Kuina, or the memories of Kuina haunting Zoro, it seems very likely that she was the driving factor in Zoro's transition. However, if Kuina is irrelevant to this behavior, Zoro may simply have developed a misogynistic attitude through growing up in a rough situation with lots of paternal influence. At the moment, nothing can be confirmed, so the best we can do is sit and wait for Achira Oda to explain Zoro's character. Hey, thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks again for helping us hit that thousand subscriber mark. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe now. And if you liked it, leave us a thumbs up and leave us a comment about the video. Take care.